everybody welcome back to the pacific war channel where we cover the entire pacific war from 1937 all the way up to 1945 and i'm joined here today by my guest it's dave holland from walking the battlefield the guadalcanal how are you yeah i'm doing good craig um thanks again for um, having me on so it's a pleasure and honor and i'm doing well today in um, freezing australia which a lot of people don't realize and we were discussing beforehand in canberra yeah. seasons are reverse so it's freezing in August. <laughs> Topsy turvy. Canadian over here is in the biggest heat wave we've seen in a long time. And you're freezing over there in Australia. Crazy yeah. world. And uh, I think this is pretty much one of the most interesting episodes that will be done in the Pacific War. I don't think I've seen anybody on YouTube cover the, all the Medal of Honors, especially for uh, Coral Canal. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was, um, I've been doing a lot of research involving the Medal of Honors on Guadalcanal. For a long time and um, i'm just waiting to put some product out it took me as you know i think we previously discussed i lived in guadalcanal uh, for two years straight and then uh, total for three years on um, small trips then and there and one of my goals was to locate every land uh, medal of honor site it's a bit difficult locating the sea and air ones uh, there was a number of medal of honors uh, earned on guadalcanal the officially there's 22 yeah. um but and during my course of travels and, and walking and uh, a lot of research, uh, lots of research, um, I've located every one of the Land Medal of Honor sites. So I thought I would love to, to share this uh, experience and um, information that I've, I gathered. Now, uh, Kim Bailey, Kim Bailey, um, he was a major and he was in charge of a C company of the Raiders. So the... Uh, Prelude to um, Bloody Ridge, they fought at Tulagi on August the seventh. Hard fight at Tulagi, yeah. and um, <clears throat> he was wounded. Bailey was wounded, uh, and on the first day, so they got the hill hill two hundred eight. They passed hill two hundred eight with his company. First time in combat, never receiving Japanese enfilade fire from machine guns. So Bailey personally ran up, um, engaged a bunker himself. They were trying to get into these bunkers, and at one stage, Bailey who was. was well, a very large man, I think, I don't know off the top of my head, was like 6'2", 6 6'3", 6 6 big, big fella. He was trying to get into the bunker, and he was kicking the top of the bunker, and his, and his foot actually went through the bunker, and he was shot in the thigh before he could take the bunker out, him and a couple of other Marines. But they end up, he was wounded in the thigh, and he uh, he earned a medal, medal there. And he was evacuated, um, and he was evacuated New Caledonia to the rear base there. So he missed the Tazamboko raid, which is the, the Marine or the uh, Raiders had done. Tazamboko raid, pre leading it, pre um, preceding it. But then when Bailey was back in New Caledonia, they used him and another Marine officer. He was giving lectures to the Army troops there about how the fighting was on Guadalcanal and how the Japanese were. Because you got to remember, at this stage, there was no information coming back because everyone had been captured, like in in the Philippines, as you know, Wake Island, as you know, they fought the Japanese. Malaysia and the Philippines were just overrun really quickly. And it was very embarrassing for the Australian and British forces about the, for those encounters. And for the Philippines, especially, it was horrifying and everyone was a prisoner. There was very few who could speak or, I mean, there were war correspondents in Manila, mind you, yes. uh, but yeah. But, you know, you didn't have that good, you know, firsthand information, you know, lessons learned coming back. So, yeah. you know, Loggy was the first time the, the Marines had actually fought the Japanese. Um, and, I wouldn't say live to tell about it, but be able to relay the information back to others. So they were using Bailey quite a bit. So Bailey could have stayed um, New Caledonia. He had a severe wound. Well, what Bailey did, once he found out that the Marines had hit Tazamboco, his unit, he goes, oh, these guys are doing raids with the Tazamboco raid. He's, I don't want to go into that too much, but that was a, a raid a few days before um, Bloody Ridge that Edson um, devised to take out the Kawaguchi supplies yeah. when they were in the jungle. But he missed out on that. So he basically went AWOL, absent without leave, um, from New Caledonia and took a, uh, a flight back to Guadalcanal. Because, you know, at this stage, Guadalcanal had evacuation flights. They were flying in um, supplies, the cargo planes, and they would yeah. take out wounded at the same time on the return trip. So Bailey flew back. And when he flew back, 
um, he immediately went up to the ridge. Um, interesting fact, Bailey didn't have his boots. His boots were cut off of him. He lost his boots. So he had a pair of um, hospital slippers on or hospital shoes. I don't know what the hospital shoes I've said, probably not slippers. It wouldn't last on some type of hospital footwear. Yeah. Um, so he, he, he made it up to the command post and he's, you know, the big greet, Oh, you know, you're back, you're back. And probably someone probably laughed at him for his shoes. I, I imagine they would, but they were glad to have him back. So at this stage, um, he was given command of a company. And then shortly after they said, you're my, you're going to be my executive officer. It's in Tony, you're my executive officer. So what Bailey's role was, he was real instrumental in that second night. Also, can you imagine six foot three guy, the Marines, you know, they needed someone to hold them together. They said between Bailey, they could hear Bailey's voice, you know, B, uh, B Company could hear Bailey's voice 100, 200 yards away yelling, you know, yelling at the Marines and and motivating them and, and you know, and, and getting them to fight. And he was a big target, too. He was running around up on top of that that um, hill number two. Also, Bailey was very instrumental. Um, they had one road, and to this day, you go there, there's only one road uh, to and fro Bloody Ridge. So Bailey was in a Jeep, and he'd make a num number of ammunition runs back and forth, especially with hand grenades, because the Marines threw hundreds of hand grenades. He was picking up boxes and boxes of hand grenades and making runs himself. And he was running up, and he was giving out ammunition. You know, he was directing um, other company commanders. He was he was jumping in the role of, he, he was just multi-changing all kinds. He was everywhere. When you speak to the veterans of the battle, they said Bailey, one minute they look around, Bailey was behind him on one flank. And they are, and someone says, oh, he was with me on the other flank. And they, oh, he was with me in the middle. So he was all over the place. And due to that, he was nominated for the, the Medal of Honor. He earned the Medal of Honor. Unfortunately for Bailey, though, he's, um, after that, he was nominated as the, the full-time executive officer of the, the battalion. Um, Samuel Griffin became the battalion commander at that stage um edson had moved on to the fifth marines so roughly the 20 so about on the 27th of september um what two weeks later um the battle of the sometimes my tanakau battles which is the river um about four miles west of henderson field Marines fought a number of uh, Matanikau battles there. Um, on the second battle of Matanikau, on the 27th of September, and we'll discuss it a bit later with an, another Medal of Honor, um, Bailey was leading the first Raiders to try to get across a place called the Nippon Bridge, the Japanese one log bridge across a, um, a Matanikau. And the Raiders were going to flank in uh, the Japanese which Puller and the 2nd Town, the 5th Marines had, had pushed across them, trying to push across the mouth of Matanikau to hold the Japanese there. The Raiders are going to um, move down the river and flank them. And the rest of the 1st Battalion, the 7th Marines, was going to do a phoebus assault and land at Point Cruz and come up behind them in a, in a giant pincer movement and, and basically um, destroy the Japanese at the mouth of Matanikau. So when the 1st Raiders were moving up the um, east bank, to try to make it to the log bridge. The Japanese had pushed uh, a reinforced platoon with some machine guns across, um, unknown to the Marines. And um, they ran into an ambush. Um, in the first moments of the ambush, Bailey, once again, leading from the very front, um, was trying to get his men to move in place. He's obviously giving commands, doing what he's supposed to do. And he stood up and he got shot uh, with a machine gun burst in the face, in the chest, and basically killed instantly. Um, he, apparently he was on his knees looking over a log and he just fell straight down. Um, and the battalion commander came up because they know they got stopped trying to get an assessment of the situation. Looked down to see Bailey, became very um, mad, tried to do a flanking um, movement himself with another the company to the left and he was shot in the shoulder. So the Raiders attack just stopped. The only time the Raiders ever stopped in, in their career, so to speak. But um, unfortunately, Bailey never lived to know he was earned. He was nominated for the medal and, and earned a medal. So he was one of the, um, it's not a posthumous medal, but he died shortly after uh, earning his, his medal. So that was the 
the two Medal of Honors earned at the Battle of uh, Bloody Ridge. Bloody Ridge. And it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually was wondering, um, because the way that this will probably come out, uh, this will be a one piece for, for my podcast immediately. But I'm going to try and do, like you said, everything that you've given me, make the visuals and cut it up in the episodes. But if you could just tell uh, my audience, you know, just a bit about your channel and why they should check you out. Oh, yeah, I have um, I have a YouTube channel called uh, Guadalcanal Walk in the Battlefield. Initially, I started up uh, where I basically walked these sites and I had my two year deployment there. I wanted to research and, and drill down on all the stuff I read about Guadalcanal. You know, one, I wanted to check the facts, and plus I wanted to get on um, areas which is kind of off the grid that most people don't go to, especially if you do the, the, the tours there, the week-long tours. They'll go to the main points, and I've made it for them, and also mainly I made it for the people who would never get a chance to go to Guadalcanal um, so they can experience something, and also to capture what Guadalcanal looks like in well, when I was filming from 2018 to 2020. Uh, due to COVID and a few other things, uh, I no longer am due to work. I'm, I'm not at Guadalcanal. I'm hoping to go back maybe later this year and definitely next year and, and do some more on the ground filming. Now, in the meantime, I've, I've started an interview and other people about Guadalcanal. I mean, next week I'm doing a, um, for the anniversary, the Battle of Sabo Island, which is a naval aspect because I cover mainly the land and the three dimensional Guadalcanal campaign is, is unreal with the air, land, and sea. Yeah. Um, I've got a, a guest, uh, Jeff Ballard, he's appearing to talk about the, the naval aspects and, and on the anniversary of the Battle of Savo Island, which is the worst defeat in U.S. naval history. Um, yeah, it was so we'll nice be discussing that. that. Oh, yeah. And then I also do, you know, a number of other videos. I've done, you know, the Getchy Patrol, I've done uh, Chesty Puller being wounded. Um, I've just got, I got one upcoming, the U.S. Army role on Guadalcanal. I got the 164, so I'm focusing. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm focusing on until I can get back on the ground filming. I'm focusing. So, but my videos, I cover. It's like I'm giving you a tour when I'm walking there. Mm-hmm. It's like meeting you. I'm giving you a one-on-one tour. Um, my videos don't have a lot of uh, whistles and bells, so to speak, to it. You know, I call it pure history. Someone, one of my viewers said, "This is pure history with no frills." I'm like, "Yeah, okay," because when I filmed it, I filmed it on an iPhone Seven. Yeah, you know, yeah. I edited it on an iPhone seven, and I uploaded it on Solomon Island inter- Internet. So it was just it's 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 you know it's a miracle even it got put up. Hey, it's fresh, also, it's fresh. Fresh. Oh yeah, I have an a adjoining Facebook site. It's called same thing, walking uh, Guadalcanal, walking a battlefield on Facebook, and I update that every two or three days. And I try to include things in there that's never been seen before you in relation. Have. To Guadalcanal, you yes, uh, fresh material. You you've found new material about Guadalcanal. In all honesty, if people were to ask who are some of the experts on the actions of Guadalcanal, I think you could be argued to be one of them now. Um, no, yeah, I'm one of the supreme geeks, I guess you could say. There's a there's a club of nerds, Guadalcanal nerds. There's a few of us. So, yeah, we we bounce stuff amongst ourselves. Peter Flavin's in Australia too. He's like one of the best then and now photoed guys. I don't know how many trips he's made. Yeah. But yeah, that's the, my two channels. And hopefully I'll, I'll get some fresh um, tour, tour stuff there. It's been a real yeah. honor to talk to you again. I stress my audience, please go check out his stuff. You will not find anything like your channel. Your channel is extremely original. It's one of the most interesting channels when it comes to this kind of history on the Pacific War. I can't think of anybody else who's doing anything like you. And uh, what can I say? I hope everyone checks you out.